and welcome back to Frankly Wines in the time of Corona. It's Thursday, so we're doing drinking in the now. And I'm very excited that tonight we have a special guest, Alex Clark, who's one of my former colleagues from Maria. You might still find him there if we ever get restaurants back. And uh, otherwise, though, he's keeping himself busy with his own line of whiskey, which he has been working at since I was working alongside him. And he's finally, finally getting somewhere. So Alex Clark, come on down. You're going to make some wonderful cocktails for us tonight. We are. We do have some great kits. They're all online. You'll get the ingredients to make all the cocktails we're making tonight. And you will also get um, a beautiful array of all local spirits. Pretty much all of these are being made in Brooklyn. Uh, the vermouth is technically done in the Finger Lakes, but the gentleman who makes it is in Harlem, so it's kind of a Finger Lakes Harlem job. Anyways, uh, Alex is going to get started with some of these classics, and uh, I'm just going to hang out over here. Okay, let's, uh, let's talk about what we're doing today. We're doing classic cocktails, the simplest of the simple, basic, but uh, delicious. Um, the hardest thing to do is to make simple syrup. This is the That's not hard, Alex. I know, that's what I'm saying. It's those that of, easy. Those of you who ask if we sell it, just listen up. You're going to be amazed how easy this is. Simple syrup. One part uh, sugar, ideally brown sugar, one part hot water, let it dissolve, uh, cool it, and that's it. Simple syrup will last forever in your fridge. You can use it for iced tea if you don't want to use it for cocktails. That's the hardest part of this whole process. So, we're going to start with a mint julep, absolute classic, known now for being a southern drink, but we're going to give it a slight New York spin with a Fort Hamilton single barrel rye, um, which is delicious. Which is Should delicious. Should be, yeah, it's made from New York rye and malted barley, aged for over three years. Perfecto. In white oak barrels. You know, it's, this is actually Brooklyn mint, too, given wow. to me from a garden in Park Slope. We're just really keeping it local here. Yeah, we are. So, you want to grab like about eight leaves of mint, give it a little uh, a rip, a tear, and then grab half an ounce of your sugar syrup. Just give that a little muddle, the stick, the muddle of whatever you have at hand. You don't want to turn this into pesto, you're gently releasing the oils. And then once you've created yeah. that little mint syrup, you're going to grab two ounces of Fort Hamilton single barrel rye, a generous two, and then top with ice. Yeah. Ideally crushed, we can crack, crush, or smash, 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 whatever you got lying around, you know. Um, yeah. So, there we go. And that's it? Or you just oh. That's it, give it a little stir. Just get everything moving. Classically, no, but if you want to add a little more complexity to it, absolutely fine to do that. Uh, also, if you fancy substituting the simple syrup for uh, a honey syrup or a date syrup, something like that, you can yeah. do that too. Perfect. Rules of the fools. That's right. That's right. Okay. We don't hang with fools. We do not. Um, next up, we're going to do an old fashioned, the most classic of classic cocktails. All right, can you give a very quick, like, five second history? Why is the old fashioned one of the oldest cocktails? Um, because it was one of the first to be made. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's, it's a simple cocktail, it's a basic cocktail. It uses uh, sugar and whiskey and bitters, and that's it, right? That's it. So, um, uh, you know, back in the day, people tried to disguise the flavor of whiskey as it was you know, somewhat in, inferior in quality than where it is today. So a little bit of sugar helps the medicine go down. Ah, okay. So they used to build that as, as tonics originally. So the simplicity of the drink uh, points to the fact that it was an original drink. And now instead of disguising the flavors, because the quality of our whiskey is so much better, um, we're augmenting the flavors with, okay. uh, with what we add to it. So um, let's get going on that. We're going to have we'll have a single barrel rye again. New York rye and malted barley. We're going to do two ounces of that. 
We are gonna do just a quarter ounce of our brown sugar syrup. And now, then, sometimes isn't don't recipes call for muddling a sugar cube? Yes, you can do that. Do you um, have to add hot water to actually get it to dissolve? No. Soda, no. soda water works. Okay. And the, 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 the more powdered the sugar is, that helps too. But ultimately, what you're doing is creating a syrup. Yeah. And you're doing that. You add sugar and water, and you muddle it until it's dissolved. Well, you can do exactly the same as by making a sugar syrup in advance. So you're basically getting the same effect. A couple of drops of uh, bitters. And then. Aperitivo being uh, a style of Amaro, like a Campari, a little bitter quality yeah. to it, but a bit of a refreshing at the same yeah. time. You can also pour it in Prosecco, like a spritz. Makes an excellent spritz as well. Certainly does. Uh, and then one and a half ounces of the four ounce of double barrel. I'm going to do a couple of drops of bitters in that one too, just to add a layer of complexity. Give that a Stir. Find yourself a coupe, ideally, but any drinking vessel will do. You could use a martini glass if you don't have a coupe, or you know what? You could just do it neat, neat in a rocks glass too. Yeah, to go coffee cup, whatever. Yeah. It all works. Any port in a storm. Get your strainer. Nice light color. It is a nice light color. Then Classically, with a dry vermouth cocktail, you'd use a lemon twist. I think that's appropriate in this case, too. So take your lemon twist, just squeeze it out, get the oils out, get that working in the drink. There you have it. One more Beautiful. towel. Voila. Well, you, it's your lucky day, isn't it? <laughs> I might not taste this one so I can share it afterwards, but it smells delicious and I. Can't wait to get my ration. <laughs> we 
if you will. I will. Okay, moving through the gift to our final cocktail, we have a, a modern classic, if you will. All right, yeah, this is a twist for sure. This is a bit of a twist, but it's been around for a while. This is a black Manhattan, given that we're standing right in Manhattan, makes yep. sense to me. Um, why is it black? Uh, because it uses Amaro, that deep, um, bitter, um, herbal, uh, uh, DJ style from uh, Italy, uh, which is a little bit sweet too, but bitter. Um, just like uh, when you make a regular Manhattan with sweet vermouth and bitters. Okay. You get that all in one when you use um, an Amaro. And in this case, we're using the St. Agrestis Amaro from uh, Greenpoint. Green yep. Green he and Stephen of Greenhook are together yes, in Greenpoint. They are. And they're nice fellas too. Um, so, one ounce of the St. Agrestis Amaro. Two ounces, four Hamilton double barrel rye whiskey. And of course, uh, you could use a bourbon, but rye is just stand up better in cocktails, you know? They have more action. Couple of drops of bitters again. Give that a spin. And I like to garnish my Manhattans. Um, with an orange twist. I also like to drink my Amaro with a little slice of orange. So I'm going to grab an orange twist for this. It's going to bring out some extra citrusy notes from the Amaro and, which has burnt orange really, it's one of the flavor components, and some of the more citrusy notes from the rye too. Would you say that if you were going to need the minimal amount of fruit to stock your bar, a lemon and an orange cover most of the basis? That's almost all of it, yeah. Wow. I would say so. You know, grapefruit, if you're making something summery. Yeah. Uh, or tequila, for example. Or a lot. I mean, I feel like you always think like wine, but not necessarily. But not as a garnish. As a component, absolutely. Yeah. You know, you'd be stuck without a lime if you were making a margarita. So, uh, but as a garnish, you, you there's never really much call for a lime except for a, a squeeze in a gin. All right. So, there we have it. Four cocktails, easily done with the barest of ingredients, and pretty much anyone can do it. Yeah, so anyways, there is, each of these two cocktails have their own kit. Um, normally, if you have bought everything together, it would be 80, but we're doing them for a special for 75. And then both of the classic kits, you only have to buy one kit to do those. You do, however, need to get your own fruit. Sorry, but uh, everything's online or come in the store. And we are thinking that if you're looking for a good Father's Day gift, that's great. And you can buy the whole set for 185, which is also a deal. So thank you so much for coming today, Alex, that's and nice. showing us all these great cocktails. And yeah. now I need to go home and work on my technique. Um, but I am excited to drink these cocktails. And anyone who's in the neighborhood, you are welcome to uh, swing on by. We'll have these kits ready to go. Thanks for coming and we'll see you Saturday. Ciao.